Okay, two by, is this, are we a microphone? Two by three clocks say it's three o'clock. <laughs> this is why NASA had three 6600s computing orbital calculations. You get two orbital calculations that are different unless you have a third machine. You don't know what to do. Um, I'm Tim Salem, uh, founder and president of Salem IT Solutions. Mostly what I do is chase effort federal research contracts related to computer internet and the internet. This work actually was uh, related to uh, uh, this information, this presentation is related to work that I did for NOAA in an effort to use Bluetooth beacons to uh, disseminate NOAA data products. I do other things. I'm also trying to teach 60, 59 students operating systems. Uh, a college course. Okay, Bluetooth beacons. Um, this is my favorite use case for Bluetooth beacons. This happens at all. I label it. This is Del Mar. Uh, uh, one of my favorite places to visit. And I had a routine down in a previous job where I could leave, leave um, thank you, thank you, thank you, where I could leave uh, Minneapolis at 7 p.m., get to San Diego at 9 p.m. local time, get to, Del, get to the hotel in Del Mar by 10, and by 10 to 8, be on the beach. But there was one piece of information I didn't know, which is the tide times. Which, which are what stood between me and getting wet. Um, and, and, and this was back in the pre internet days when tide times were a little bit of a little folded up booklet that had all the tide times in them. And of course, it was 10 o'clock at night, so the stores were closed, the surf shop was closed, I couldn't get tide times. But that was, the, that, was the, the, that was the piece of information. I mean, it's not much information, it's simple, but it's really critical. Like I say, it's what keeps you from getting wet, what keeps you from get, get, getting stranded to low tide. Um, so what I wanted was current Del Tide times in Del Mar. I wanted contextual information. I wanted to know, I wanted information that told, that was related to my current, current location, my current activity at the current time. This is my model of what I want today. This is a notification on the uh, lock screen of my smartphone that was triggered by proximity to a Bluetooth beacon. And that information gives you gives me everything I wanted to know. Del Mar Tides, just so that you knew that you were in the right place. They, okay, it's not Saturday, November 5th, but if we can pretend a little bit, uh, it's, 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 you get the idea. And it gave me the previous high tide and the next low tide. So I had all that information simply by walking by uh, a, a, a Bluetooth beacon that was appropriately configured. Uh, this, is, this is my model. Uh, this, this model um, is one of several for Bluetooth beacons, but this, I think, embodies sort of the original model, uh, which is maybe not the dominant model anymore. Um, this does raise the issue of, will I get a notification every time I walk past anything? And that's sort of the challenge here. But this is a model uh, for what you could do with Bluetooth beacons, uh, appropriately, appropriately configured. Um, hard, hard to turn my head to that screen. So what I'll talk about, I'll talk about what Bluetooth beacons can do in sort of general terms. It'll be a uh, in-class exercise uh, because, because, well, I'm teaching this semester and I've got an in-class exercise. And that in-class exercise, you'll configure your mobile device. Everyone here has a smartphone. Right? Uh, you can configure your iOS or uh, uh, Android phone to receive Bluetooth beacons. Um, the, Android, the iOS people will have to install Chrome, which will take a while. So if you're really going to do this exercise and you have an iPhone and you don't have code, just start installing it now. Um, has anybody seen, seen, seen Bluetooth beacons on their devices at the moment? Okay, a few people. It's not because you've been to like, this lecture before, but, but uh, apparently you have like, a bigger mouse for it. Um, uh, we'll skip the uh, uh, exercise too because we don't have much time. I'll talk in some detail about uh, 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 how the uh, uh, both, both Bluetooth low energy beacons work and how the whole uh, beacon ecosystem works. Uh, and then I'll make a few uh, uh, opinionated, a few editorial comments about where I think uh, uh, things are headed with Bluetooth beacons. I guess I'll have to stop, stop trying to turn my head to uh, thank you for the water. Um, so so this, this presentation uh, focuses on Bluetooth beacons. There are several reasons for that. It focuses on Google solutions. There's several reasons for that. Uh, perhaps the most important is that the Google specification is freely available. I, I can read it without signing non-disclosure agreements. I can talk about it even after I, well, I didn't sign the non-disclosure agreement, so there's no issue there. But, and, 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 and I can do an in-class exercise that both iOS and Android people use pretty much the same techniques to see beacons. Uh, but, and, and in general, the principles are the same. 
between I, uh, Android between Google Eddy Stone Beacons and Apple I Beacons uh, all in the detail were different. Um, these are Bluetooth beacons. That's one, one form factor. I have a bunch of them, and, and, and you may be able to see them electronically. They're small devices. They just repeatedly transmit an advertise, a short advertising method, message used for Bluetooth beacons. They come in other form factors. This is the big one. I mean, this isn't subtle, but it has the advantage that it has easily replaceable batteries. I don't have to cut it apart like I have to do the other beacons in order to replace those batteries. And I can, I can, I can run these beacons at high power and not worry about, about having, to, having to figure out how to replace non-replaceable batteries. What's it cost of each of those? Say 30 bucks. I mean, uh, uh, Bluetooth beacons uh, in, 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 in low quantities are around 30 bucks. You know, I'll get a whole big but if you want to experiment with them, uh, you can get them for all the other computer bucks. But, and, and there's a ton of companies. Um, uh, and, and, and the other part of this uh, uh, system is that there are eight other parts. Yes. It's on. Oh. It was red. I figured that was enough. Um, apparently it was. Or something. Um, uh, the, the other, uh, another component here is that you have uh, a mobile device, meaning a smartphone, that is uh, capable of receiving BLE messages, uh, Bluetooth low energy messages, and the mobile device does something. Um, and that, that does something, maybe that you may display a notification in the notification drawer, uh, it may display a notification on the lock screen, at least for Android, like you saw in that early picture. Um, uh, there's a solution for um, iOS, which you, uh, based on Chrome, which uh, creates a widget, which has a widget that will display this information. Uh, or you can go to the Chrome browser and there's a physical web. If you hunt around uh, and, 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 and know that secret handshake, you can use your Chrome browser to view uh, uh, Bluetooth low energy beacons. And also, a beacon may, in some instances, be able to launch an app that's already installed on your phone, or it may be able to prompt you to go to the Google Play Store and um, and load something. Uh, oh, so this is just the same same be same notification in, in a, a pull down the notification drawer. This is the picture from early on in the presentation of a, of a notification on your lock screen. This is a screenshot green screenshot of an iOS display of an Android of a, a Chrome widget that displays nearby um, uh, beacons and. Uh, that will be part of the, for, for, you, for you iOS people, that will be part of the instant class exercise to get that working. Uh, also, this is the physical web display on a Chrome browser. I think this was done on Android. Um, you can all, once you get this notification, once a user sees this notification, this, the user can then click on that notification and you might be able to get, for example, a web page loaded that is pointed to by that notification. Um, an app might be launched or uh, uh, you might click and be taken to the Play Store and told to, uh, uh, or, or given an opportunity to um, download an app. Uh, you click on some of these beacons and, and, and you get a web page that just says that. Again, it's today's Tide Times, not, not November's Tide Times, which I, when I did this slide. But um, uh, it, 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 the contents aren't so important, but the important point is that when I click on that notification, when I tap on that notification, uh, it fires the, the phone fires up a browser and brings me to that web page for, for additional information. I won't talk a lot about using Bluetooth beacons. Uh, this is, I'll mainly talk about the sort of technical nitty gritty. But there's, beacons are a hot topic, particularly in retail. Uh, I think the notion in retail is that if I can increase my sales by a fraction of a percent, if I'm a multi-billion dollar retailer, that's a big increase in sales. And there's various sorts of models. I think there's a model where you walk by the, walk by the phone display and, 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 and you might get uh, a notification for phone plans, or you walk by the shoe display, you might get a um, uh, coupon. Um, the challenge here, of course, is, is the idea of walking through Target and getting a notification every 20 feet is kind of overwhelming. And I bet all of us would shut off notifications unless we're really masochistic. So, so there's a lot of excitement in, in the retail industry 
and some experimentation. You can go to Target stores and see that there are beacons running. Um, you can go to the Apple store, of course, and see that there are Apple Eye beacons. I walked past the T source the other day and was astounded that my phone actually pinged and, and had a notification from the T source. So people are using them, but they're not widely used, and they have the, the pretty fundamental problem of, of, of balancing customers' willingness to accept notifications with, with just too, way too many notifications. Part of the, one of the original use cases is you walk through a museum and, and as you got close to an exhibit, you're, you'd have your smartphone out and you'd get a beacon that would then maybe point to a web page that would give you information about that particular museum exhibit. Again, one of the original use cases was you walk up to a, a, a vending machine with your phone and uh, using Bluetooth beacons, you'd be able to interact, you'd be able to get to a web page and interact with that vending machine. Um, oh, yeah, let's do this uh, exercise, um, see how this works. It's not that I'm leery of, of you know, in-class exercises, but, 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 yeah, I'm leery of in-class exercises. Let's give it a shot. Let me start, I'll run through this, I'll run through this twice. Uh, uh, first for the IRS stuff, because it's a little bit more complicated, uh, and then the Android, and then I'll do it again, and, and we'll see how many can actually do this. So, iOS devices, you have to have Bluetooth enabled uh, if it's not already enabled. Does everybody run iOS smartphones with Bluetooth enabled? No. Not obvious? Yeah, I was gonna say, the, cl the claim is it really doesn't drain your battery anymore. I don't know if that's true or not, but I'm just, just relating the marketing claim. Enable Bluetooth, install Chrome, if you haven't already, if you haven't already installed Chrome, uh, it's gonna take a while, and, and so I'm not gonna wait for you. Um, so then you need to add, a, you need to add a Chrome widget and, and so you need to swipe down to the notification drawer and then swipe left to the, to the today view and then tap edit. And then, then go to Chrome and more widgets and tap done. Those instructions work for everyone? Yes, no? Yeah. Okay, well we'll get to Android. And, and then, and then um, navigate to the d display, to the to today view and scroll up if necessary, and there's some bugs that may or may not have been fixed, but at the time there were bugs where you might have to tinker with it in order to get the full widget to display. Because if it, if it was at the bottom of the screen, it, what, it, didn't, it was too dumb to know that it was at the bottom of the screen, you wouldn't be able to get the, um, the, the show more button. Um, but you should be, and you might have to close uh, 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 the widgets above it, but once you get there, you should be able to tap, um, uh, you get OK, got it button, and you should be able to um, tap OK, got it, and be able to enable this. And then, of course, you have to restart uh, uh, everything all over again. So is that working for anyone? Totally confused? Does that mean yes, it's working, or or, or I don't know? And, and, and then you should be able to come back and restart it, and you should be able to see um, uh, beacons, of which I have a handful here. Um, Okay, here's, here's the Android version. Um, again, you need to have Bluetooth enabled. You need to have um, uh, location uh, 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 tracking enabled. And, and Google, of course, Google knows what you do with your phone. I, I, Google collects everything and I'm convinced that they, they never throw any data away. They just buy more disk drives. Uh, and so they know, I forget the figures, it's like 86%. Uh, uh, a vast majority of people have Bluetooth enabled on their Android phones. They won't tell you how many people have location tracking enabled, except they'll say, I think the term I heard used was a vast majority. Uh, uh, but they won't, uh, for whatever reason, won't tell us what the exact number is. So you need locate, you need to go to settings, look Bluetooth and, and um, uh, uh, location settings. You then need to go to Google Chrome, tap on the three buttons, and get to settings, uh, 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 scroll down to privacy. Okay, what do beacons have to do with privacy? Well, uh, I think it was, that's just a place where they could find, ignoring the, the obvious uh, uh, political commentary, that's a, where they could find uh, a place to put it. Uh, uh, tap on privacy, and then if you scroll down far enough, there'll be a physical web uh, entry and then you can click on that and enable it and then show, um, show uh, whatever it says there, show, show what's nearby. In other words, show beacons that are nearby 
and um, um, then you should get a page, a web page that shows beacons. That, that I think I've got beacons that are on, on loud enough, uh, running enough power that all of you should be able to see it. So yeah. some people have been able to see beacons. Yeah, more of them. Yeah, they do. Uh, it depends on how you count. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, it turns out I actually have, I think, eight beacons, but 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 uh, they're they're running different different uh, uh, different and, and 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 the fact that you can see them and don't see them, um, I'll make some editorial comments on at the end. Uh, Google 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 seems to swear that they that I should be able to receive beacons and and usually I can and sometimes I can't and, and they seem sort of goofy. So do I need to run through these instructions again or is everybody permitted? You're looking skeptical. Close, I think. Uh, I keep getting a page called Explore the Physical Web with Chrome. So if you could just go to the instructions, I think I'm pretty close. They're probably pretty, if you're, oh. You've got to install that. You've got to install that. Swipe to the today screen and then install, uh, um, edit it, and install the new widget, and then enable iOS, and then restart. Uh, restart uh, Chrome in here. But but there's a couple of comments from this. One is, you should, phones should be able to receive beacons, but there's a bunch of bunch of secret handshakes you have to know. Uh, in order to make it work, and the chance of a of a of a customer walking by and knowing all these handshakes is, is pretty small, in my opinion. Um, uh, and 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 Google has taken the tack that they want they want be good they want beacons to work on both iOS and Android. And uh, Google, uh, as I'll talk about more, Google the Google browser, the Chrome browser, is their uh, a, a solution for making that happen on multiple platforms. Oh. Uh, one other, there, there's also a extra credit piece for uh, for you uh, uh, Iowa, uh, for Android people that you can go to on some recent Android phones. You can go to settings, go to Google, and nearby uh, you may be able to in, in, enable nearby. I'll talk more about that later, but that's sort of a hidden miss because. Depending on how new your Android is, and depending on whether your vendor uh, didn't mess this up, you may be able to go to uh, Google, uh, settings Google provider. Okay, that's the in-class exercise. So, how many people? For how did this work for everyone? How many people did not see any beacons? So a handful. Um, pardon? I'm using BB. I can't help you there. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't have a BlackBerry solution, and, and and but it sounds like a couple others had problems, but not too many. A vast majority, it seemed to work. That's good. I'm always. I'm always a little bit amazed when when, when in class exercises work. Oops, that's not what we want. Okay. So that seemed to work. <coughs> this latest Chrome browser, and so we all did that. So, what did we learn? Um, so, how does this work? Um, well, in the abstract, you've got a uh, Bluetooth beacon, one of these devices of which I have, I've got eight uh, here, seven. I couldn't find one this morning. Uh, uh, you have a Bluetooth beacon that's announcing a, an advertising message, a short, short little blurb, and a mobile device receives it, and then the mobile device goes to the internet and, and gets some more additional information. Because that info, uh, I have a pointer. That that information in the in the advertising me message is not very much. All it is is often just a URL, and so the device has to go to the internet to get all that additional information. In other words, the URL doesn't include the type times. It just includes a pointer to a website that has the type times. That's how it works in abstract. It's not really, oh, it's not really, it, it doesn't quite work that way. Uh, I'll get to a slide that explains really how it works. It's useful to s mention here, important to mention here, 
that Google really has two different models of how beacons ought to be used. And, and, and as an external observer, it appears that, it, it feels like Beacon, uh, uh, Google has two different groups working on beacons, and they have different models. They seem to talk to each other, uh, but, but there are a couple different models. One is the, the, the physical web model, which I think was the original model within, within Google. And the idea here is that, is that, that beacons will, will associate URLs with, device, with, with objects. They'll become smart objects. So that vending machine will have a URL, and then with that URL you can use the web browser to learn more information. The beacons that you see are all announcing a, form, a URL in one form or another. But and, 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 and so in some sense my beacon uh, pretends, one of, some of my beacons pretend that they're in Del Mar, and, and if you're proximity to the beacon, it figures you want Del Mar uh, information. That, uh, again, that, uh, the, 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 the physical web model is that the, the beacons will web enable uh, uh, smart objects or will allow smart objects to have URLs. There is another model, the nearby model, in which Google associates data with a location. When I say associates data, that if I, if, if, if that I, in, 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 a, in a fashion that we'll talk about in a moment, um, that I, as a beacon owner, I can associate oh, up to a thousand bytes of data with, with a beacon. And so when you get walk in proximity to that beacon, your phone will get on the order of a thousand bytes of, of JSON data that then some app on your phone can do something with. So it's a different model. It, it, it I think, came out, I think, that, I think the nearby people had this model <coughs> before beacons, and then once they heard about beacons, they say, oh, that's pretty neat. Let's use beacons, and, and, and we can use this nearby model whereby when you get Proximity of a beacon, you will suddenly get a, a down, a dump of, of uh, uh, up to a thousand, on the order of a thousand points of data. So that's 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 in the highest, most abstract level what beacons are and what they can do. Let me talk a little bit about beacon technologies. I'm going to skip through some of this because because this was originally built for a two-hour. Um, uh, 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 this is a version of a presentation that was built for a two-hour tutorial for. Or engineering types. Bluetooth, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about Bluetooth low, low energy brief, just briefly. I'll talk about the uh, Eddystone protocol and about system architectures. If there's one takeaway about Bluetooth, it should be that Bluetooth and Bluetooth low energy are not the same thing. Bluetooth classic is, I, I guess it's, I th you have to call the original Bluetooth something. Uh, I call it classic and I, and I think that that's actually used on the website as well. Uh, so, so what that, that that old Bluetooth that used to power your your earphones and 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 stuff and speakers and stuff that's classic Bluetooth. Bluetooth low energy is what you see in beacons and and and, and some other devices. They're not the same. They're not compatible. Um, the old radio chips would support the the classic Bluetooth, but not Bluetooth LE. You have to have chips, phones that have uh, support for at least Bluetooth 4.0. They're usually labeled. Um, Bluetooth Spark is the marketing name for Bluetooth Low Energy. I don't know how, how widely used that is, but at least at one point uh, it seemed like um, uh, uh, the Bluetooth uh, interest group was pushing Bluetooth Smart. Uh, so if you see the term Bluetooth Smart, that's the same, same thing. Uses unlicensed, unlicensed 2.4 gigahertz band, just like just everything else in the world. Uh, it's uh, transmits at one megabit per second. It has a range, you know, I, I, I think standard riders, all can, the only range that anything ever has is 100 meters. And 100 meters is dependent upon a lot of stuff, and most beacons are run at much lower power, uh, so that you can, you can maybe see them 10 or a few tens of meters away. But in theory, on the spec, if you run these beacons at high power, you can run them at a um, uh, uh, range of 100 meters. It's designed to use less energy than Bluetooth, than Bluetooth, than the classic Bluetooth. There's a whole bunch of reasons for that. I'm not an electrical engineer, so I can only guess at what they are. And now, after the fact, uh, the Bluetooth energy, uh, the Bluetooth interest group says that this is a longer, this is useful for longer range intermittent communications, which is a way of saying it's not very fast, so you don't want to transmit a whole bunch of data. And it's useful for the Internet of Things, because gosh, that's the hot topic, and, and so Bluetooth low energy is fighting for um, a, a role in, in, in Internet of Things and home automation. 
I can do a different presentation that says I don't think they're going to win. Yes? So in a controlled environment, what's your thought of using Bluetooth versus Wi-Fi? My quick answer for Bluetooth versus Wi-Fi is, is, is Wi-Fi is a much more heavyweight protocol. It generally is going to use more power. If you have, uh, if your mains powered, then you don't you don't care about power. But if you're battery powered, I think you really want to go to something that uses less energy than Wi-Fi, and that means either Bluetooth, Bluetooth low energy, or 802.15.4. If, if you don't care uh, and uh, about the, because it's not battery powered, then. Wi-Fi is pretty mature and, and, and pretty powerful and, and works pretty well and can probably work better than, than Bluetooth low energy in, 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 in some applications. Um, there's, the specs are freely available. They're 2,700 pages long. They're not for the faint of heart. And if you want to find every, anything, you have to dig through a whole bunch of documents. And I think these are the documents that I used in order to assemble the information here of just the Bluetooth documents. That's just the way it is. Uh, that's just what standards are like. No, that's not true. Some standards are worse than others. Uh, but the blue IEEE tends to build really limited standards that point to a whole bunch of other stuff. Let me talk about the packet formats just very briefly um, at the lowest level. Uh, blue, Bluetooth has a bunch of channels. Uh, and and, 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 and uh, two types of channels. One is an advertising channel. An advertising channel is just broadcast broadcast little bits of information. The rest of them for, are for data transfer. Beacons use the um, advertising channel. So you've got a little bit of header. You've got a PDU that can be up to a whole bunch of bytes long. Um, but the advertising format, you only get 37 bytes at the lowest level, 37 bytes of payload. So that's not a lot of, I mean, so that all that tight information didn't fit in those 37 bytes. Rather, what it fit in there was a URL. But you have some more overhead. Uh, you can find the presentation on blog if you want to know about this. Uh, you have some advertising. The, the advertiser tells you who it is. That's the advertising address. That's the thing, that's the 48-bit MAC address of my beacons. And so now you're down to having 31 bytes. 31 bytes is what Google gets to play, play with. Um, uh, and that advertising data, which is where, again, the Edison or the Google Bluetooth low energy beacon protocol fits. Uh, all these, uh, this advertising data is structured as type link values, tuples. Um, they're documented in a bunch of places. So now we're down to 30, 31 bytes is what you see for Eddie Stone. It's also a type link value. Um, you get some flags. You get a 16-bit service ID. There's a big list of service IDs uh, that are part of the Bluetooth spec Google has, I think I listed the next slide, Google has like eight of them, and, and Apple has a dozen of them, and a bunch of other companies have them. So people have lots of plans of what they want to do with Bluetooth, but that service ID here does two things. It identifies it as Google, and it allows Eddie Stone beacons to work with iOS efficiently. Eddie Stone data, service type data. Now we're down to the Eddie Stone protocol. Obviously, I'm skipping through stuff here pretty quickly. Um, and, and there's there's a byte of, of frame type, there's ranging data, and then there's data. Let me talk about ranging data. So the, uh, the, 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 the idea is that with ranging data, the idea is that you'll be able, you, the smartphone will know how far away it is from the Bluetooth beacon. The Bluetooth beacon transmits in that ranging data, transmits basically its transmit power. The, the smartphone knows how loud our SSI receives signal indicator. It knows how loud that beacon is uh, uh, and when it receives it, and by some math, it thinks it knows how far away the beacon is. Sort of. It doesn't work very well for two reasons. Uh, one is, 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 is this just, those are just estimates, both for the received signal strength indicator and for the transmit power are just estimates. And, um, um, uh, the other is uh, radios are involved, and and if you if you if you ever look at radios uh, in in an environment like 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 uh, uh, 2.4 gigahertz, you can see that just the received power of a, something that's transmitted at a constant power will just jitter around constantly. Um, so if if a beacon says it's 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 a meter away, it might be. 
It might be 10 meters away. If it says it's 100 meters away, it's probably not one meter away. So it gives you sort of a, in my experience, maybe an order of magnitude, a little bit, a little bit more precise than an order of magnitude uh, guess as to how far away that peak can reduce. But that's what ranging data is. And, and again, the idea was that, that you'd be able to, you, you retailers would be able to use those, those, those to figure out when, someone, when a phone was getting really close. Yes? Uh, is there also a way to find the direction? Could you find beacons directionally? Um, yeah, that's another, that's another presentation. Um, I mean, with a directional antenna, you could try to, you could try to, try to use use something like that, and, and, and you could use all the usual direction finding uh, 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 um, uh, techniques to find where beacons are. I mean, but but direction finding techniques are not trivial or important anymore. Where do you use relative strength or distance? Pardon? Relative strength or distance is that built into the response? Yeah. Yeah. This is the this is the this is the whoops. Where was it? That that byte wherever it was was the um, oh, ranging data. That's how that's how. That's the power at which the beacon is transmitting. Your, your, your phone knows the power at which it's receiving. So could you walk around and find a beacon? Uh, oh, maybe sort of. So those two numbers as a ratio will change as you get closer. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's the, it, it, yes. It, and, and, and that pretty much happens. It's just saying, I, mean, I don't, translating that into absolute numbers is, no, is, yeah, is, is, is kind of shaky in, in my experience. Um, we're not going to solve a map. We're not going to look at raw Bluetooth frames, but you can do that. If you're interested in, in a really hardcore, uh, I recommend you go get the NRF Connect app um, that runs on both Android and iOS and it'll allow you to see raw beacon frames. Yes? And what's your experience in, uh, your experience in accuracy when you use Bluetooth to triangulate the location? Like more yeah, better than order of magnitude. But it's it's kind of shaky. I mean, I, I can have stuff sitting right next to me, and it will be claimed it's six or seven meters away, and and, and conversely. So, like I say, it's what I, my experience is it's better than order of magnitude, but not a whole lot better. Uh, we're not going to look at raw frames, um, but you can you can go go download that app if you're ever really interested. I will talk a little bit about the protocol in in length. Yeah, it, it a little more length. So I split these up into type length value tuples. Um, that, those are just some flags. That's that's the Google uh, UUID Bluetooth unique universally unique identifier. Um, there it is repeated again. Why is it repeated? Oh, that's just the way what they had to do in order to get through iOS to work efficiently. Um, this is I think we will see. There's um, the, the frame type and there's the ranging data. You have to go look at the spec to see what that really means. But that's, again, the transmit power of the, um, of the uh, of beacon. And I suspect some vendors do a better job of that than others. Some of them take into account the fact that their batteries, your battery's wearing down and maybe it's not transmitting as, 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 as powerfully. And others might just have a, if you set it to high power, it just might have some value. That's up to the vendor, and, and yet another reason why these things um, may may um, ranging may not work well. There's there's four Eddie, there's four four Eddystone frames. One that that you're seeing is it's a it's a web address, um, and there's a little bit of compression done, done here because we're down to only so many bytes of data. So here we have a, 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 a web address. And some of you may be good at reading ASCII, others of you may be not so much so. But if you, as you read through, that's a, that's a URL. That 03 compresses a bunch of characters. Um, um, HTTP, blah, 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 are, 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 are compressed into those four codes. This is a good point to say, if you're going to play with beacons, always use HTTPS. Um, the Eddystone spec says, we don't care. You can have either HTTP, HTTP or HTTPS. Chrome says, if it's HTTP with no S, if it's not an unsecured connection, we, won't, we will ignore it. And so the first thing that happens when people get beacons is they configure a, configure a URL. It's, it's HTTP rather than HTTPS. And, and Google can't see it. And, and they have to go through this exercise. Um, and you will also find 
a whole bunch of websites still do not do HTTPS, or else don't do it correctly. My first choice for what the beacon would have been for this would have been uh, uh, ministar.org. It doesn't support HTTPS, so I went to the sessions page. It supports HTTPS, but the certificate's wrong. Um, so uh, that's sort of your experience. One of the, the first thing that you do if you play with beacons is you'll have to go make uh, you'll have to go make uh, SSL work on your web server. But that's not, Google thinks that's a good thing. But I mean, you know, how Google, I don't want to say that Google's heavy heavy-handed, but but you know they have their view of the world. Yeah. If you want to use Android, you sort of have to adopt adapt to it. So anyway, always use HTTPS even though the spec says otherwise. Says says it can be more uh, The rest is a compressed URL. Um, and if you can decode act, uh, um, um, uh, ASCII that says uh, uh, ncontext.us slash CA01, I think. Um, and, there, uh, and, and so that's, that had to, oops, the .us wasn't compressed, but there's compression. Uh, you can compress .com, .edu, .a few other, .net, a few other things into one byte as well. You can't compress .us, but uh, that's, so that, that's, that's, that's one form of any stone uh, uh, message. Another form is the telemetry protocol. I'm not going to debug this, de decode this for you. I'll just tell you the answer, which is every, I don't know, every dozen frames or so, uh, uh, um, the beacon will transmit a telemetry, an any stone beacon. Every dozen frames or so will transmit a telemetry beacon. And that tells you battery voltage, temperature, the number of PDU's frames, it is transmitted since it was last powered on or reset. And the uptime in, in tenths of a second or something, or seconds, I forget. Um, some odd figure. Oh, and this is actually in, in some sort of funny floating binary floating point. Uh, nonetheless, these beacons, you, meaning a smartphone or the beacon administrator, can get this information out of a, out of a beacon. It allows for a little bit of management of beacon, uh, beacons. I'll digress to the moment here, for a moment here, and say that beacon management is, uh, as you might expect, completely ad hoc. Every vendor has their own beacon management protocol. Google has has a sort of limited beacon management protocol as part of any stone, but it's not complete. And so if you're a big company managing beacons from a dozen different vendors, you probably have a dozen different beacon management systems. That's just the way Beacon. That's the state of beacons at this point in time. So, how is the this this compressed URL translated into all that information? Obviously, there's no tied information there. Uh, oh, that so that beacon that that compressed protocol translates into that compressed URL expands into um, such and such, and then what happened? And 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 you can see that that web page has that information. So, how does this web page? information get into the beacon. If you look at that web page, if you look at the source for the web page, and this is the sort of conference where two or three of you probably already looked at the source, um, that there is in the metadata, there's some con there's there's some information. There's a content information. Google, Google, I mean Google, Google uh, crawls the whole web and they certainly, once they realize that you have a web page that's pointed to a by a beacon there, they will crawl it. I think they promise every 15 minutes or so. so so they, the, the, they promise more that, that more or less, if I change that information, that it will be up, that their caches will be updated within 15 minutes. So Google has cached this information. They got the content off of the, they got they, they retrieved this line. If I don't have that in the metadata, they'll dig through my website and try to figure out what the appropriate content is. But it's a lot more reliable for me just to put it in the content. Uh, there's a pointer to the icon, and that icon sure enough comes from my website, and then there's the title. So I had this picture before. This isn't the abstract of sort of what happens. What really happens is that there's a Google physical web service that, that when my Android phone sees a beacon, it goes and contacts the physical web service. And the physical web service, if it hasn't done so already, will go to my website and query it. In actual practice, as soon as Google knows that there's a, a page, a URL, that is pointing to my beacon, it will continue to um, uh, scan uh, to, to crawl it every, I think they promise every 15 minutes. Um, and so Google actually caches this information and so just when the, when the beacon walk, when a person walks by a beacon, a smartphone, 
uh, is proximity to a beacon. It does not, I see no indication on my web server. All that information is cached at Google. Um, well, so how does this, this work in practice? Um, uh, the mobile device issues a post request to the to Google Physical Web Service and it gets a response from JSON. Uh, no, we're not going to try to do that. Is this, I know this exercise doesn't work. Yes? It seems like that would be valuable to make sure people have capture I know of no analytics yet that will that, that I can extract from Deacon. Oh, first the, the first answer is I get no indication as a Beacon owner that someone passed my Beacon just just passing it. Okay. The question is, will Google Analytics do something for me? The answer is I don't know. Yes. You can put that in your URL and you track the statistics of the service. Okay. Yeah, that's what you want to be fetching at once. No, but Google, 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 Google knows, and so they and, and so they can. You can apparently use analytic Google Analytics or something similar. Sure. And I just haven't done it yet. But you, you can't do that without help from Google. Yes. Uh, the answer is yes. But you don't use the platform as always. So if you want to see one of those the next session, that's usually you just going to be back to that. There. Better answer than I can give, which is, gosh, I don't know, but it's on my list to to take care of that stuff. I've never done it. Um, we're not going to do this exercise. Instead, we're just going to look at that, that, that this is the JSON data that's returned by the Google web server, physical web server, the experimental one, um, uh, when, when, when my smartphone comes in, on, in, in proximity to a beacon. Uh, and so I get a, a big blob of JSON uh, that has echoes some information that I probably provided it. Uh, and, and then here's the interesting stuff, which is I get the, I get ID, site URL, and display URL. They're all the same here. I don't know when they're different. Here's the title, right? That's the title information that I got from my website, and it's shipping down to my smartphone via JSON. There's the description. There's the URL um, for the um, icon, and there is the icon. I deleted 8,000 characters of icon, <coughs> uh, uh, compressed icon, but it ships, it ships the whole icon. So it, it caches all that data in the beacon, including the icon. And then, this is Google, right? So everything is ranked. It turns out this is kind of a fake rank uh, uh, it, it, for, this, for this sort of experimental web server because it, it just is a rank based upon, upon it, does a, it does a distance calculation. The real, the, the real nearby server does a real ranking. Um, they, and and if, if people walk by your beacon and, and mute it because they don't want to hear it, uh, you reduce the ranking. And if your ranking is low enough, you won't see it on your notifications. Um, so are we sitting for time here? Um, so. So the obvious question is, so, so, so this seems like sort of an ad hoc, ad hoc system, where I set up a website, Google crawls it, extracts some data, and store it, archives, start, and, and, and archives that data, caches that data. And that leads to the question of, why can't I just specify the data directly? And that's what the nearby does. Nearby says, just give me up to 1,000 bytes or on the order of 1,000 bytes of data, and I will associate it with that beacon. And so you sort of skip the whole web page stuff. Instead, you just directly um, using a bunch of Google, a bunch of Google uh, uh, facilities. You just say, when you see this beacon, here is the uh, thousand bytes of data that you should download to the phone. Um, Does it still go to the web to get the thousand bytes? It does not go to your website. It goes to a Google server. Oh, on the internet. On the, yeah. Is there any solution for no internet? Android doesn't work. My answer is Android doesn't work without internet connectivity. Uh, the, um, if you dig through the source code of the physical web app, you will see that they have uh, that they have. I think uh, they don't call it a heavy web, a big a big beacon. They they have the idea that a beacon could be self-contained. There's a name for it. If you dig through the, the 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 GitHub source of the physical web app, I think you will see hints at it. Or or go to go to the Get them a repository for, for Eddie Stone and Physical Web, and, and they have 
tinker with stuff. I mean, Google writes, develops a lot of stuff. They don't always support it in, in, in five years, but they write a lot of stuff. Um, uh, so we've, we've, I think I've hit all, all this. Oh, and, 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 and with nearby, that thousand bytes of information could be, I mean, a bunch of stuff. It could be an Android intent. And so that intent is how you fire up an application that might be, it could be an Android intent with data. And so that's how you fire up an application that's already installed in your phone, and that's how you poke an Android phone and say, could you please go to the Play Store and fire up that app. Having said that, I, um, I will say, having said that, uh, Google nearby is something I haven't fully played with. It is, uh, I think the phrase that was used by a Googler is it is more tightly integrated with Google services. For me, that was a euphemism of there's like a dozen different Google services you've got to figure out how to work before you can ever make nearby work. But if you have a lot of spare time and, 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 or, and or are experienced with a lot of Google services, nearby is, is a powerful technique for beacons that you should at least look at. But it's not, it's not for the, it's not for the casual user. The casual user should just use URLs. Um, or more, tight, more tightly, is that the phrase I used? I think that was the phrase that the Google used, more tightly integrated. And of course, uh, nearby is only available on Android, Android um, devices, not iOS devices. So sort of to reiterate, on Android systems, um, beacons can be can be um, uh, processed by the nearby feature nearby feature of Google Play uh, services. Uh, so that's that's one of the advantages that Google has in rolling out Google Play services repeatedly is that they can embed new features in there and you don't have to use a new app. That's the current way that that Google. Uh, prefers that you access beacons. And, and that's how, again, you go to the settings, settings, go to, to Google, and go to, to, to nearby, and you can enable that feature. Um, the next approach is uh, the Google browser. Um, we saw that page in the, uh, uh, at least to your Android people. And then there also is a physical web app. If you're really playing with beacons on Android, go download the physical web app, the source is available. It's not maintained, and it's sort of uh, not up to date, but it's, it's, it's a lot of useful information. A uh, few opinionated statements. I have a couple minutes here. Uh, I think I think beacons have a lot of potential, um, and they're creating lots of buzz. But I don't think we really know what to do with, do with them. I don't think we have a killer. We I don't think anybody has a killer app for them yet. The, the the concern is we can't just generate notifications, and Google is getting really notification shy. You can see that in Android O oh, that uh, they're trying to categorize beacons, but they recognize that, that people won't put up with a whole bunch of uh, and, 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 and a lot of retailers are, are experimenting with them. I know the target was, and I think still is, I just haven't heard anything from them. Again, we don't have a good model. I don't think anybody has a good model as to how, how beacons ought to interact with people. And maybe they just ought to interact with apps, and that's my current feeling is that the real benefit to beacons will be to um, poke your an app that you have installed. Sort of this appless, appless use of, note of beacons, the, beacons, the idea that Bluetooth beacons can, can, can work without an app is, is I don't think, going to get very far. Yes? So, I, I, we've been working in this for three years. How this works in terms of interactions with people. This model of, you're absolutely right in terms of pinging people with this message, but there's things you can do, which is what this uh, fluid intelligence platform we built over the last three years does, which allows you to interact with people in ways that they care about, right? The, the CX is important. And so the CX on a straight, straight, you're absolutely right, on a straight VLD experience or any stone experience is really poor and people get sick of it. Yeah. But you don't have to do that. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. Yep, I think, I think we're in agreement there. Um, they have a lot of potential. There's no real standard yet, no de facto standard. Nobody has won the protocol wars. They're, they're, they're a bit temperamental. RF is involved, radio frequency. Anytime you have RF involved, things are, 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 are kind of temperamental. Uh, MVP, 
uh, my most detested words in the, in the computer industry, minimal viable product. In my opinion, a lot of MVPs aren't, aren't uh, minimal viable. They, they may have came, come close. And uh, there's just a lot of updates in this area, a lot of hardware updates, a lot of software updates. Again, we're back to human intervention, in human interaction, we need to make a model for that. And again, I think they have a lot of potential, we just don't know how to use them. So with that, I think I'm out of time, I'll answer a question or two, but we're gonna have another crew that wants to come to your group. Sure. Is there any solution either from the tool side or from the side, or from the that sort of thing? Yeah, there is, there is a, a compressed URL, so that there's an encrypted URL. So that I can't, I can't walk in with my beacon, my Amazon beacon, to a Target store and and start announcing. And so yeah, there are, there is some, there is some limited security. Yes. Um, I think within the last maybe six months, maybe because of all the growth that we really, the announcement of Bluetooth five, and I went to the website. Do you know of any movement forward on Bluetooth five? It's been announced, but I'm not seeing it. I don't even know what what state is it, and 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 and. and and, and, and the, the IEEE is really good at putting specs on the web server, but only after they've been approved, voted on and approved, and then I think there's a, some month lag. So I don't know if it's even uh, been voted on yet. But I, I and, but but, on the site. Oh, yeah, I don't, I, don't, I don't know what the state of chips is. Uh, that's, and so for phones, that's still ways up. Anyway, thank you. Uh, for your